Okay, tomorrow is the quantum exam. It's my second quantum exam this semester. It's covering things like uh, n particle systems and variational principle. Feeling really good about variational principle. There's one problem that so far I just haven't really solved yet, and I, I want to solve it once for myself. I have I have the equation that I need memorized, but I don't want to memorize it because there's a chance that he could say to derive it on the exam, and I just haven't gotten the right answer yet. And it has to do with, here, let me just show you. I think I'm just being really dumb and I just need to work through it one more time, but this is the problem. It's converting a two-body Hamiltonian here, where you have the momentum of the first particle squared, the momentum of the second particle squared, and you're assuming that the potential is the same for both of them. Uh, it's converting that form of the Hamiltonian into this one, where the P with the leg on it is the total momentum squared, about the uh, center of mass, and then little p squared, which is the momentum that is uh, correlated to the relative momentum. Why is it useful to be able to write it that way? Well, say you had some harmonic oscillator potential. If you have the Hamiltonian expressed that way, the solution would correspond to the motion associated with the center of mass oscillating, and it would also have an expression in terms of the motion, like the relative motion while, it's oscill while the whole thing is oscillating about the center of mass. And I think just under certain circumstances, it's easier to solve the Schrodinger equation by expressing it this way. I've just gone through all of this algebra, and I'm not exactly getting there. Uh, there's just, here, th look at all this algebra. I mean, in reality, it's not that much, but it's just a lot of keeping track. And I don't know if you know what P's look like, but capital P's look identical to lowercase P's. So it's, it's, it's hard to be like, wait, am I sure that I mean this P or this P? <sighs> I'm just going to rework the problem. I'll let you know as soon as I finish it. Found my mistake. Again, went through all of this work again. And guess where the mistake lies? Right where I'm defining all of my terms. So what this is corresponding to, what this P here is the relative momentum. So it's the momentum, the, to the momentum relative to these two momenta for particle one and particle two. I just went over my professor's notes again, and apparently it's supposed to be an M2 here and an M1 here. God! God, that's frustrating, because I was getting to the end of my answer, and I just about had it, and I, I was logic checking myself because I said, well, what happens if I let M1 equal M2? And when that happens, I mean, the units match up, so that, or the dimensions match up, so if I impose that simplification, I get the answer. And so I was like, so if my dimensions are are completely right, I don't understand how all of this is wrong. And lo and behold, it was like, it's not even step one of the problem, it's like step five of just defining everything that I had. <sighs> okay. If I have time to, I'll rework that with my newfound knowledge, but that's so tedious and I'd rather I need to do something else now, so I'm going to move on. Now I get that this should be funny, probably, and probably is to a lot of you, so yeah, I, I, taking a break from the whole center of mass slash relative coordinates, and I'm going to my discussion problems for quantum. Problem 1. Two particles of mass m sit in a harmonic oscillator potential and interact uh, via another harmonic oscillator potential with a different spring constant giving a Hamiltonian blah blah blah. Change to relative and center of mass coordinates and rewrite this Hamiltonian. What is the exact solution for this Hamiltonian? What are the eigenenergies? So cool. Get to just do it again. Finally finished the uh, center of mass slash relative coordinates conversion problem. Looks like the next question is a bit of a softball. It's just giving us a one-dimensional Hamiltonian. Uh, it says to assume that a trial wave function has the form of a Gaussian, so something that like, looks like e to the minus x squared, use Ritz variational principle to obtain an upper bound on the ground state. So that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to knock this problem out, then I've got three more, and then I might call it a night. I'm starting to feel really, really good about this. Uh, there's one thing that if my professor puts it on the exam, I won't know how to do. Or, I haven't tried it yet, so it might be kind of hard. 
And that's if I have to use variational principle on something that is in center of mass slash relative coordinates. I'm actually starting to think a problem like that wouldn't be too hard because if he gives us, he'd have to give us a potential. So he'd have to give us a two particle potential. And if we're using variational methods, he'd also have to give us a two particle wave function. And I know how to do expectation values for two particle wave functions. So that's, yeah, I think I could take care of that. I'm still going to try to find a problem that looks like that. That way I can start to feel a little bit more comfortable. But after thinking about it, it just didn't sound as bad. All right, it's about 8.30 now. I have uh, only two more problems left to go in this discussion, and then I'm gonna go over my homework, which the homework I'm actually very comfortable with, but I figured it's good to just go over it again. And then after that, I just have to go over my professor's lecture notes on uh, the helium atom, and then I should be good to go with this exam. I'm gonna try to get as much of this done tonight, which is why I'm gonna cut the video here. I, I have this sneaking suspicion that this exam is going to be a lot more challenging than last one, but we'll see, and we'll see what everyone else thinks before and after the exam tomorrow. Let me know in the comments section what class you guys are excited to take next semester, and I'll see you guys there.